Hi, I'm Devin Williams, and this is your Prince George's County Public Schools update. Today, we celebrate students that are going green, others that are keeping the peace, and still more who are learning to save lives. All of that, plus students recognized recently for being academically and athletically at their best. Here to start our congratulations is Dave Zarin. There was patriotic pomp and applause aplenty at the recent Board of Education Awards ceremony at Laurel High School. School board members, CEO Kevin Maxwell, and other school system officials all offered their hearty congratulations to newly pinned National Board certified teachers, members of Frederick Douglass' state championship track team, and to the seven very talented and fortunate students who just won coveted posse scholarships that cover all college expenses for four years. John has a 4.18 grade point average takes 10 AP classes. He is the senior class president. So John, you're a big man on campus over there. We know that. He has been accepted at the University of Maryland in College Park in Baltimore County, but he is headed to Bucknell on a posse scholarship. Add in scholars and teachers of the week and schools recognized for their talented and gifted and Title I programs, and you had a parade of winners across the Laurel stage that couldn't help but make everyone proud to be part of Prince George's County Public Schools. If Mother Nature were giving out awards, she'd be sure to give one to the students at Glen Park High School who lent a helping hand that was also accompanied by a green thumb. Here's Grant Kittleson with the story. The rain didn't deter the students at Gwynn Park High School from digging in the dirt to plant trees around the school's campus. Thanks to a donation from Casey Trees, a nonprofit from Washington, D.C., shade trees and four different types of fruit trees were put in the ground with the assistance of Gwynn Park students who are part of the Environmental Studies Academy focused on agriculture that is based at Gwynn Park. The trees will be used by students in the academy to study natural pest management as well as the science of fruit trees. And provided everything goes according to plan, this is just the start of a bountiful fruit orchard. When it comes to giving back, there may be no more important gift than that of passing on what you have learned to the next generation. The Student Government Association at Oxon Hill High School for the second straight year wanted to make sure that the current middle schoolers will walk a path of peace. Here's Grant again with that story. For the second straight year, the Student Government Association at Oxon Hill High School, along with the student board member, put on the Partners for Peace Summit. Various middle schools were invited to Oxon Hill to learn about peace, bullying, teen domestic violence, and drug awareness. In order to better illustrate these topics, high school students from both Oxon Hill and Charles Flowers put on very realistic skits and also took part in a question and answer session with the middle school students. Last year we had a surge of violence in the county, so that's when we first started the Partners for Peace Summit. So this year we just wanted to continue that and spread the message on to middle school who will be coming to high school soon and let them know we have to end it. So hopefully they get the message today. While there are awards for making communities safer, probably the best award of all is saving a human life. At Prince George's Community College, Students in a high school biomedical program became EMTs, trauma specialists, and lifesavers for a day. Here's Dave again with that story. So as a medic, this is the type of scene we may come to, and we're called to help this person. So I'm going to let you guys kind of do a little detective work at this scene and let me know what are you most concerned about right away. This ladder. This ladder. And the wires on them. It is the rare high school class where the teachable moment is a traumatic injury. But that's what confronted a group of students who experienced some all too real simulations at Prince George's Community College. The nearly 200 students from the county school's biomedical programs at Bladensburg, Henry Wise, and Friendly High Schools got to see what nurses and medical technicians do when they train at the collegiate level. So faced with blinking, visibly breathing mannequins and accident victims in need of urgent care, the students reacted as if lives were in the balance, which they were. I have a question. At this, while, while we're still doing all this, uh, do you have someone still checking for Paul to make sure he doesn't? You know what? That's a great 
great question. So come on over here. What things are we going to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's getting vital signs. Okay, you ever seen a blood pressure cuff ever before? Sure you have. Which arm would you do it on? The one that had the injury? There's little holes Okay, so sneak in there right around him. Oh, get that blood pressure done. Okay, they have a lot of energy, a lot of great questions, and actually their intuitive actions were really good, just what their instincts showed them. On they, they adapted the, the same way we would adapt, and we tried to show, show them scene safety down, and all the different steps we would take courses, all the way to the ambulance. Right now, and like one of the students said, you, you don't realize how much goes on behind the scenes. Exactly. It's not really like TV all the time. <laughs> Everybody was uh, checking the patient and they were fixing wounds and stuff, but yeah. nobody was checking his breathing. So I was like, well, what if the patient dies off and everybody's so worried about everything else that's going on? So I just wanted to see, do they still check the breathing to make sure that he's still stable? Because we don't want him to die while you check it for a wound. For the students, many of whom hope to become medical professionals, seeing their textbook diagrams come to life and learning from those who save lives every day was exactly what the program organizers had in mind. And what it does when it encounters water, it slams shut and stops water from getting down in your trachea. Well, we have to get control of that because we're going to put a tube down into your windpipe. Well, basically, I wanted them to be exposed not only to the technology, but what our students are doing here at Prince George's Community College in the health fields and how we have um, simulations, which are like scenarios for real life situations, and how we apply that to their learning process because it's, it's better to practice on mannequins and with the technology than to, you know, practice on real people. So we wanted an opportunity for them to show what they know and to do some cognitive linking of classroom-based information mm -hmm. and real-world um, society or real-world experiences. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of told them it was coming um, and, and they've just stepped up to the plate. They've, they're excited, I'm, as you are, I'm ready for them to be my physician as well or at least um, close by. <laughs> A nearby student like Xavier Parker perhaps who can't wait to do what he loves. But what do you want to do someday with this? Um, I really want to work in the ER. I'm, I like to do the urgent care stuff, the whole intense running back and forth and trying to save the life. I like that type of stuff. Congratulations to all those students for making us proud to be Prince Georgians. That's it for this edition of Update. For Grant Kittleson and Dave Zarin, I'm Devin Williams. We'll see you next time with more great news from the Prince George's County Public Schools.